Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Tuesday the 1st of June. Happy June everybody. We're racing through the year already. Well it's a beautiful day here in Northampton and I trust that wherever you are today you're well and enjoying this glorious weather. Shall we bow our heads together now at the beginning of our time together of prayer and remember the presence of the Lord with us. Psalm 67 May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. We thank God for his words to us. Now let's pray together. God of wisdom and love, giver of all good things. We thank you for your loving kindness and your constant care over all creation. We bless you for the gift of life, for your guiding hand upon us and your sustaining love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories for the joys that cheer us and the trials that teach us to trust in you. We bless you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, for the living presence of your Spirit, for your Church, the Body of Christ, and for all the means of love and grace. In our weakness you are our strength, in our darkness our light, in our sorrows, comfort and peace. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. God of love, your Son gave us a new commandment that we should love one another, even as you love us, the unworthy, and the wandering. Give us a mind forgetful of past ill will and a heart to love one another despite our inconsistencies. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives. Bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, as most of you will know, at the moment we're reading through Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And today we begin to read in chapter 6 at the third verse. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry, that as servants of God we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of speech, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet unknown and true as unknown and yet well known as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, 
as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your heart also. Do not be mismatched with unbelievers, for what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship is there between light and darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Belial? Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are temples of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from them and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean. Then I will welcome you and I will be your father and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and of spirit, making holiness perfect in the fear of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Paul is speaking in this passage about the various barriers that he's had to face in being a messenger of God. And yet he speaks of how, despite those barriers, those difficulties, those misunderstandings, those misattributed thoughts and deeds and actions and attitudes, he's still known the active, powerful presence of God in his life. He's been able to speak of God using even, uh, as he would put it, such an unworthy servant. And I'm sure that we all would feel at times that as followers, disciples of Jesus Christ, we find it hard to count ourselves as anything other than unworthy. But we're made worthy because of Jesus and what he's done for us. And so that becomes our our base uh, of confidence and the position from which and we minister and we serve, not who we think we are, but who God says we are. And this is really Paul's basic point through this whole section. We read a little bit of it over the last couple of days, and again, yes, and then today. That for Christians, our joy in service and our joy in life is independent of our circumstances. Let me say that again. Our joy is independent of our circumstances. You see, happiness is counterintuitive. It does not lie where we instinctively would look for it. We might want to find happiness in a fine reputation or a career or being honoured for your accomplishments or being blessed with a comfortable life that comes along with success. But rather, as Christian disciples, we possess everything we need, even in the midst of sorrow and suffering because we're emotionally dependent not on our possessions or goods but rather of the beauty and the wisdom and the compelling love of Christ. We thought of that yesterday when Paul says for Christ's love compels us or urges us on, urges us on to be the temple of God not a human temple, because the Romans would have known all about those, those were almost on every corner, Uh, but to be places ourselves where God's spirit and presence is pleased to dwell. So we may bear God's presence and be an example of that. How are we an example of that? Well, as Paul is stressing here, through our awareness and acceptance of our vocation in Christ, to take the name, the power, the love, the grace of Jesus with us and all of that not only when we have everything going well for us but in every situation doesn't matter whether we're surrounded with conflict or oppressed or whether people think badly of us falsely 
Jesus himself had said, blessed are you when people curse you and persecute you and say all manner of evil things against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. May we rejoice and know joy in our lives because of who God says we are and because we're aware of the compelling love that Christ has for us in our lives day by day. Amen. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's bring our prayers to the Lord now for others. Let's pray together. And we begin today by praying for the elderly, the vulnerable, the isolated in our society. For those who are particularly in need of God's grace at this time. Those who are mourning the loss of loved ones or the anniversary of the loss of loved ones. And we hold before God all those who seek to bring them care and compassionate comfort this day. That God would strengthen and encourage them and help them to make a difference in the lives of those for whom they care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then as we work for, pray for the work of BMS World Mission in Afghanistan, we pray for children as they resettle. And those who perhaps are uh, returning to Afghanistan after times of study elsewhere in the region. We pray for teachers in that country and we pray for the safety of missional personnel that God would grant them fruit for their labours, making a difference and making Jesus known in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then we continue to pray for our country in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and particularly at the moment as there's an increase in infections and as there's a concern about whether we're entering a third surge or a third wave of infection, we pray for wisdom and we pray for courage for those who make important decisions. We pray for those who advise our national and local governments and to ask that they would have complete integrity in the decisions they take. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today. Keep you safe. Please keep praying for one another and keep looking after one another. And if you're able to pray for me, then please do so. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye. And God bless you.